Hi, I'm Berthy Fang, and our project shows how you can estimate interior material properties of objects given only monocular video of their surface motion. Given the monocular view shown here of the subtle motions of a bunny, we're able to estimate its spatially varying Young's modulus and density values. Even though we only observe one side of the bunny, our method recovers material properties of sides that were unseen in the video, as well as the interior of the object. Our approach is based on the idea that vibration can be decomposed into modal motion. Modes and their resonant frequencies are related to material properties via an eigenvalue equation involving the stiffness matrix K and mass matrix M. Given a known geometry, we solve an inverse problem to recover K and M. However, this is an ill-posed problem, because in monocular video we can only observe the projected motion of part of the object and a tiny portion of its modes. We begin with an input video of an object vibrating. This physics-based simulation shows a cube moving under damped free vibration. We apply phase-based motion processing, followed by a pixel-wise FFT along the time axis, to produce a log power spectrum of motion amplitude. For each peak, we extract the corresponding image space mode. Assuming we have a good mesh model of the object, we sample the visible mesh vertices in the images. Given these sampled 2D image space modes, we solve a non-convex optimization problem to estimate a 3D volume of material properties. In this example, by utilizing the image space modes that are observable in simulated videos, we're able to identify an interior defect. In addition to synthetic experiments, we demonstrate our method on a data set of real videos of drum heads. In this example, the drum head has a stiff region in its center, a defect that was introduced by painting gel onto the underside of the drum top. For more information, please visit our archive preprint. Thank you. How can you acquire microscopic images in a dynamic environment such as underwater? It is possible to acquire a single plane image but it will have a very shallow depth of field. Acquiring a focal stack will result in motion blur due to the long acquisition time. One-shot imaging where the focal stack is scanned during a single exposure was suggested as a way to shorten acquisition. The one-shot image has to be deblurred in post-processing and previous methods suggested simple deblurring based on restricting assumptions that led to a limited range. We suggest using a deep neural network for the blurring and show a tenfold increase in the depth of field with a minor increase in the acquisition time. We train the deep net on a simulated dataset and it results in a more flexible system with a larger depth of field. We will show more exciting results in our talk. Typically, inverse problems assume measurements y relate to unknown sources x through a fixed forward model f. In seismology, earthquakes nucleate under the surface in unknown locations. What we can measure are the arrival times from the earthquake source to a receiver on the surface. Measurements are related to the source and receiver locations through an Earth's velocity structure, which determines the forward model f. To solve for unknown source locations, f inverse, the inverse of the forward model, can be used. However, seismic inversion is ill-posed, making this challenging. Even more difficult is the fact that the Earth's velocity is unknown. Using an incorrect velocity model for inversion results in poor earthquake location estimates. Instead, we propose to solve for the Earth's velocity while simultaneously solving for the earthquake locations. We introduce DeepGem, a new neural network approach to solving blind inverse problems. DeepGem mimics expectation maximization optimization to solve for the unknown parameters of the forward model, in our case the unknown Earth velocity structure. Please see our poster for more information on the structure of our network and how we use normalizing flow networks to better approximate complex distributions. Here we show results from a simulation with receivers only on the surface. We would like to identify the anomaly. Here is the true earth velocity, the baseline reconstruction, and the deep gem reconstruction. Unlike the baseline which was run by a seismologist, deep gem is able to reconstruct a smooth gradient as well as the anomaly. Even with a few number of sources, as shown with nine sources, DeepGem does a good job of recovering the true source location as well as reconstructing the velocity, where mean squared error is shown in each reconstruction. We show that our method is able to recover a variety of Earth velocity models, even when noticeable structure does not appear in the center of the region of interest. We have shown a method for solving blind seismic tomography. 
We believe our optimization framework is general and can be extended to other blind inverse problems that have differentiable parameterized forward models, such as blind deconvolution. Thank you. Hi, this is Abhinam from Purdue University. I am here to give a brief intro into our work on HDR imaging using quantum image sensors. Generally, when we are imaging a HDR scene, we use exposure bracketing, where we capture multiple low dynamic range images at different integration times, which are then fused to obtain the HDR data. Quantum image sensors have the ability to oversample the scene because of their significantly higher frame rate. This higher frame rate is possible because of the ability of QIS to work with lower bit depth in the ADC. In this work, we systematically show that when we use exposure bracketing with QIS, we can achieve dynamic range far greater than a standard CMOS image sensor, and we can achieve it in fraction of the time taken. We answer two major questions in this work. The first one is, can we quantify the dynamic range advantage provided by the QIS? The second one, is what reconstruction algorithm should be used for the HDR reconstruction of QIS data. We start by first deriving an analytical expression for the exposure referred as SNR, SNRH for both single bit and multi bit QIS. This expression takes into consideration sources of noise such as read noise and dark current, which were ignored in the past works. We verify the correctness of the derived expression by testing it out on real data. We then use this expression of SNRH to quantify the dynamic range of QIS and CIS. We can clearly see here that QIS has extremely better dynamic range compared to the CIS. We then move on to a second question on HDR reconstruction for QIS. Our theorem 2 provides the optimal linear weights for HDR reconstruction of QIS data. Based on this, we propose an optimal recursive algorithm for HDR reconstruction. We also conduct real experiments to verify the dynamic range advantage provided by the QIS and also the effectiveness of the proposed reconstruction algorithm. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Atul. I will be talking about passive interphoton imaging. A camera pixel is like a light bucket. It collects photons for a fixed exposure time. Two things limit the dynamic range strong noise in dark conditions, and saturation limit in bright conditions. This is a fundamental limitation if we only rely on the number of photons. Instead of measuring only the total number of photons, what if we exploit the time dimension of photon arrivals at each pixel? For a dark scene point, there will be very few photons, so the average interphoton time will be large. As the pixel brightness increases, the average interphoton time becomes smaller. So the key idea is that pixel brightness is inversely proportional to the average interphoton time. Note that this scheme has no saturation limit. But how do we measure this interphoton time in practice? We use an image sensor called Single Photon Avalanche Diode or SPAD. SPADs have the unique ability to precisely time tag individual photons. We call our method Interphoton SPAD or IP SPAD. Let's look at an experiment result. This scene contains a dark tunnel with a bright halogen lamp outside. A conventional camera requires multiple exposures to cover this extreme dynamic range. Quite remarkably, the eyepiece pad captures this entire dynamic range of over 10 million to one in a single shot. You can read the dark text and see the bright halogen lamp simultaneously. Here we show the other extreme where the eyepiece pad captures very few photons in each pixel. With some denoising, we can reconstruct images with just one photon per pixel. Interphoton imaging can provide extreme dynamic range beyond the capabilities of conventional image sensors.
Imaging Black Hole Dynamics by Aviad Levis, David Lee, Joel Trupp, Charles Gammy, and Katie Bauman. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope collaboration produced the first ever black hole image. This image was computationally constructed for measurements of synchronized telescopes collected over the course of an entire night. Key to this result is the underlying assumption that M87 is static during acquisition. In this work, we present an approach to infer dynamic properties of sources that evolve during acquisition. This is particularly important for studying the black hole in the heart of our own Milky Way galaxy, which rapidly evolves on the timescale of minutes. Images from the Event Horizon Telescope are reconstructed from interferometric measurements. A key challenge is that we are only able to measure very few spatial frequencies while the source is evolving. In this work, we present an approach that allows us to use these extremely sparse measurements to extract statistical properties of the gas surrounding a black hole. We model a video as a composition of a static image and random dynamics. Random dynamics are given as a solution to a stochastic partial differential equation. A key challenge to estimating the dynamics is that pixel values are driven by an unknown random source, which we do not want to estimate. We tackle this fundamental challenge by deriving a projection-based loss that is robust to the input random source. Please see our poster for more details. In simulations, we use synthetic EHT measurements and jointly recover the unknown static image and dynamic parameters. Finally, we show that we can handle model mismatch and that the SPDE model can capture complex dynamics of physically realistic black hole simulations. These results demonstrate promise for applying our approach to analysis of future EHT measurements. We present ACORN, Adaptive Coordinate Networks for Neural Scene Representation. Neural implicit representations, or coordinate-based networks, have emerged as a new paradigm to represent signals. A coordinate network takes low-dimensional coordinates as inputs, such as a position in a volume, and outputs a low-dimensional signal, such as the occupancy, or the sine distance function at that point. A challenge in using these representations for large-scale volumes is the number of forward passes they require. Even for a moderately sized volume with a side length of 1,000 voxels, querying the entire volume requires a billion forward passes through a potentially large neural network, making training and inference computationally inefficient and time-consuming. ACORN can fit signals better than simpler architectures like SIREN or local implicit representations, and ACORN is significantly faster to train, as shown for fitting the 16 megapixel image of Pluto. While fitting the image, ACORN simultaneously optimizes a multi-scale decomposition of the image, which allows fitting detailed regions more efficiently. ACORN fits this image to 30 dB peak signal-to-noise ratio in 60 seconds, while SIREN takes over an hour of training time to achieve similar quality. ACORN relies on a hybrid architecture using an adaptive block coordinate system that is optimized online during training to reduce fitting error. A global coordinate for each block is mapped to a feature grid by a fully connected neural network. Then, to recover the signal at a point within the block, we interpolate a feature vector at the corresponding location and decode the signal with a lightweight decoder network. Using this hybrid architecture that combines an implicit representation, explicit features, and an online multi-scale decomposition, ACORN is well suited to represent large-scale signals.
Imaging photoplethysmography IPPG, is a set of techniques for measuring the blood volume pulse from light reflected from the skin using cameras. These methods have the potential to enable low-cost measurement of important vital signs, including heart rate, blood oxygenation, and respiration rate. While these methods hold great promise for low-cost and scalable physiological monitoring, physiology video datasets are hard to collect because they usually require high-quality videos, which require large storage, access to a ground truth sensor, and privacy concerns. This makes it hard to train machine learning models in IPPG applications, and most recent work still uses non-machine learning methods. A common solution to the problem of limited data is data augmentation to synthetically create new training data by manipulating the original training images. But standard augmentations, such as flipping the images, don't affect the IPPG signal that we are interested in, and they may not be very useful for training models for physiology. Instead, we can use video magnification to create data with different IPPG signals. This highlights features relevant for IPPG, making it easier for the model to learn which regions to focus on. To clearly illustrate the advantages of training the network with our augmentations, we created a large domain gap between the training and test sets, where we trained the network on very easy stationary videos of light skin type subjects, and we test on hard videos with large motion and dark skin types. Training the network to measure heart rate from videos with our data augmentation dramatically improved cross-data set generalizability on both large motion videos and videos of subjects with darker skin types. Hi, we present a novel future HR DOC method utilizing unlabeled images. Collecting large scale HR DOC data set with ground truth is a challenging because each sequence has to be shot twice with another motion. They are limited in the diversity of camera parameters. Another major difficulty is the post capture manual examination. All samples must be carefully examined for any unwanted motion in the ecstatic exposure stack. We address the above limitations by using very few labeled images and many unlabeled images. In the first step A, we train the network N with few labeled images L and static images S along with many unlabeled images U. We use supraise loss function for L and S and self supraise loss function for U. In step B, we use pre-trained network N to generate HR output for the U set. In step C, we generate static varying exposure images from the generated HDRs. Then, we introduce motion between the images by transferring the optical flow from U. The generated synthetic dynamic varying exposure images or a matching input for the generated HDRs. Finally, in step D, we retrain the network again with paired inputs L and P using supraise loss function. Quantitatively, we show that our approach trained with only 5 labeled examples outperforms fully supraise methods in 6 out of 10 metrics. Our approach trained with only 5 labeled examples has less artifacts than existing approaches. In summary, we present the first zero shot and few shot HR diversity method with unlabeled images. We have presented a novel method to generate labeled dynamic training data from unlabeled data. Our approach, trained with only five labeled dynamic samples, achieve comparable, if not better results than these state other methods. Thank you. Hello everyone. Today I am presenting our new work on color contrast enhanced rendering for optical see-through head mounted displays with optimized display power. The optical combiner of OSD HMDs blends the rendered pixels with the physical background. This essential property of combiners often causes a color blending problem, which hinders the ability of clearly observing the virtual content in mixed reality scenarios, especially when the virtual and real scenes show low color contrast. Additionally, the compactness requirement of HMD's form factor usually results in limited battery capacity, greatly affecting user experience. It is essential to incorporate the energy saving problem while solving the color blending problem, so, we propose a novel real-time color contrast enhancement for laser beam scanning OSD HMDs, aiming to improve the distinction between the rendered image and the real background based on the opponent colors theory. To further increase the perceptual color contrast, our work utilizes one characteristic of the human visual system that the color of one region induces the complementary color in the neighboring region, that is, the simultaneous color induction. We also exploit the luminous efficiency function to theoretically minimize the power consumption of laser beam scanning type OSD HMDs, requiring no hardware changes. Similar to the previous work, we manipulate the display light in both chromaticity and luminance to enhance the color contrast. By contrast, we introduce a new constraint, name power constraint, to reduce display power as much as possible. 
In particular, we shift the complementary color of the surrounding background toward the direction of the green laser under power constrained, and then apply the remaining four constraints like the previous work. Here is an example indoor scene perceived from the HoloLens 2 by participants in a daily environment. We note that the white coffee cup looks a little bit greenish because its color is shifted toward the color of the green laser. This is the result of our two alternative force choice subjective experiment. The participants were asked to compare a color contrast enhanced rendering with the original one. We find an optimal configuration for both color contrast enhancement and power consumption reduction based on this experiment. Thank you for watching. In this work, we focus on a class of computer vision applications where the goal is to capture high-speed videos of sparse scenes. By sparse scenes, we refer to applications where the scene's points of interest occupy the image plane very sparsely. In these applications, capturing the full 2D sensor for every frame is wasteful and limits the maximum achievable frame rate. In this work, we present a more efficient approach for high-speed imaging of such sparse scenes. In this approach, instead of capturing the entire image at slow rates, we only sample small portions of the full sensor image at high frame rates. To encode the position of all scene points, we place a diffraction grating in front of the lens, which spreads the incident light for every scene point such that it intersects the sample part of the sensor. Then, using a convolution-based image formation model, we decode the full resolution image based on the color and intensity of the sparse measurements. We demonstrate our approach in several application domains, including high-speed motion capture of fast-moving markers, such as darts fired from a toy gun, or an actor performing a fast rope-skipping exercise, particle image velocimetry, where the goal is to reconstruct the fluid flow by imaging these white tracer particles, and recovering a high-speed video of combustible particles, like the sparks generated from this sparkler. So please visit our poster for more details and additional results. We present Cody Studio, an end-to-end -end learning based studio system to enable large depths of your 3D reconstruction. Traditional stereo vision suffers from a fundamental trade-off between light level, exposure time, volume of reconstruction, and noise. In the light-limited environments, a small aperture of the severely limits the light throughput, leading to noisy captures and results in low-quality 3D reconstructions. On the other hand, increasing the aperture will let more light in, but reduce the depth of field as a trade-off. To overcome this trade-off, the naive approach is to replace each of the cameras in a stereo system with an EDF camera, and then estimate disparity maps directly from the EDF pairs. However, this approach does not show significant improvement due to the inconsistent features in the reconstructed EDF pairs. Here, we propose coded stereo, an end-to-end -end learning-based technique to overcome this limitation. Different from the naive approach, for both fields, the face mask, the EDF texture reconstruction, and the stereo disparity estimation are all trained together end to end. The learned face mask create a numerical invertible blur, allowing us to recover sharp image texture and stereo correspondence over a significant extended depth of field than conventional stereos. Here we show the real experiment results using our prototype. From the captured image pair, our method can reconstruct both RGB image and disparity with high accuracy in a large depth range. We further compare our method to conventional stereo system with the same aperture size. Our method outperforms conventional designs in a high quality reconstruction with clear details and sharp edges. Please refer to our paper and website for more details. When a lens maps a point in the world to a point on the sensor, a diffuser maps each point to a pattern. Since each point maps too many points on the sensor, we can leverage compressive sensing to recover the full scene from a subset of pixels. 
Brian work has shown that we can encode video or hyperspectral content into different subsets of pixels and then recover a full video or hyperspectral data cube without much loss in resolution. The lensless reconstruction algorithm is an inverse problem where we solve for the scene image X given the measurement B in the forward model A. Current model-based method use convex optimization with a hand-picked prior to solve for the scene image. Deep learning-based method can achieve higher image quality but requires label image pairs, which are impractical to obtain for 3D lensless imaging. We propose an unsupervised deep network to utilize the capabilities of deep network without requiring any training data and can be applied to many lensless applications. With UDN, an untrained network is used as an image generator. A full model follows producing the corresponding simulated measurement, which is then compared with a capture measurement to update the network. Here's the progression showing that the network gets better at producing the scene image. This framework can also recover 3D data cube from a 2D measurement by replacing the 2D erasure with a 3D encoding function, showing how the 3D data is encoded onto the sensor. In simulation, compared to other model-based methods, our method produces sharper images, fewer artifacts, and better perceptual image quality. With experimental data, our method achieves better image quality in both applications. To conclude, we propose an unsupervised deep network that pro produces high image quality without any training data. Our approach is limited by the long reconstruction time and with the recovery resolution limited by the GPU size. Thank you for your attention. Common structuralized systems have a camera tethered to the projector. This paper frees the camera and allows it to move in the scene in an unconstrained manner. Our system both localizes the camera and recovers the 3D scene in a world chronic system from a single image. We call this system FreeCam 3D, and it has many applications in augmented reality and indoor localization. There are two key ideas in this paper. First, encoding depths in the projector defocus with an optimized face mask. Second, using a pattern with unique and rich local texture for spatial localization and depth estimation. Together, these two ideas permit us to decode the 3D positioning of the scene from a snapshot. We do this by adopting a fully differentiable learning-based pipeline. Here, we recover 3D point cloud along with the camera pose. Thank you. Hi, this is Zihui. I'm presenting our recent work, End-to-End -end Sequential Sampling and Reconstruction for MR Imaging. A central challenge in MRI is its low acquisition process, which leads to high cost, patient discomfort, and significant reconstruction artifacts. The accelerated MRI mitigates this challenge by only measuring part of the case space to reduce acquisition time and recovering high quality images with a reconstructor. Recently, there has been an increasing research interest in using deep learning methods to optimize the subsampling pattern. In our work, we propose a framework that provides adaptive sampling patterns for individual patients. To do this, we first sample a few measurements to get a rough reconstruction. Then our learned sampler will sequentially estimate the next best measurements to take based on the intermediate information from the previous step. We also jointly optimize the deep sampler and reconstructor through end-to-end -end training. Here, we show the full acquisition process and final reconstruction of our four-step model with left and right rotated knee images as inputs. The pink areas are the selected measurements. We can see from the pointed column that our model is aware of the input rotation and can sample measurements accordingly. Note that our model is not trained with rotated images but still learns to adapt to rotations. Our reconstructions are often more accurate with more detailed local structures than other baselines. For example, the white areas pointed by these arrows are wiped out by other methods but accurately reconstructed by ours. 
Thank you for watching. Please check out our website for our code and more details.